We're ready to introduce the uh, topics in chapter two, and this is one of the major topics in Calculus One. This is going to occupy a very large part of our time for the entire semester. It is the notion of the derivative. Now, to talk about that, I want to return to the tangent line problem. And if you recall the tangent line problem, so we have a curve defined by y equals f of x, and we have a point, call it x. And from that point, we then have a point on the curve. That point has coordinates, and we know those coordinates are x comma f of x. Those are the coordinates of that point. At that point, the curve has a tangent line. Now, there are some, there are some restrictions to how this argument can work, and, and we'll talk about those as we go along. But this is the basic idea, the, the structure of the, of the thought process we're going to be going through. Our task is to find the equation of this tangent line. And you'll be asked to do that several times. You'll be asked, given a function and given a point on the curve, you'll be asked to find the equation of the line tangent to the curve at that point. Now, one thing we recall is this. y minus y0 is equal to slope x minus x0. This is the point-slope form from way back in basic algebra. And so if you're given a point that lies on the curve, and if you know the slope of the line, I'm sorry, a point that lies on the line and the slope of the line, then this is the, this is the bridge to finding the equation of that line, where y0 is the y-coordinate of the known point, x0 is the x-coordinate of the known point, and m is the slope and so what we're after here is the slope and this is the big phrase you will use over and over and over again in the calculus it is the slope of the tangent line the slope of the line tangent to the curve or simply the slope of the tangent line now in order to find the slope we need to know two points that lie on this blue line. And the issue we have is we only know one point that lies on the blue line. We only know the point of tangency. Every point on the curve we have identified. We can find any point on the curve. But what we cannot find is a point that lies on the blue line other than the point of tangency. In order to find a point that lies on the line, we would need to know the equation of the line. But in order to find the equation of the line, we need to know the slope. And if we don't, and in order to know the slope, we need to know another point that lies on the blue line, and we're round and round and round the circle. Now, a person could argue this. What if this curve comes down and intersects? Then couldn't we find this other point? Well, in principle, that's, I suppose that's a, that's a, a valid idea. However, in order to find the point where two graphs intersect, you need to know the equation of that graph. And we can't find the equation of that graph until we know the other point, and we can't find the other point until we know the equation of the graph. And so, we're, again, we're chasing our, chasing our tail here. And so our problem is to find the slope of the tangent line. The resolution of the problem is this. We choose... And for the current discussion, I will assume my value is positive. It doesn't need to be positive. The same argument works if this value is negative, but it, I'll just I'll use my value to be positive. So we choose a value and we label it delta x. Delta x is considered to be a single letter, a single variable. This is not delta times x. It is delta x. It's similar to if you've ever seen old English books or something where they, they combine the, the letter, two letters into one, E or whatever that is. And so what we have here is delta X. It's just pronounced delta X. 
If you square this, we will simply write delta x squared. This does not mean delta times x squared. It means this individual value squared, and so on and so on. So we're going to choose delta x, to be, a, and we're going to choose it to be a positive number. Not zero, but a positive number. We could choose negative, it's the same argument, but we're going to argue the positive version and the negative, if delta x is a negative value, it's, it's essentially the same argument. And so, we take that value and place it here. This is delta x. Now, if this distance is 3 and delta x is 2, then this total distance is 5, because the coordinates of this point on the x-axis is x, plus the delta x. Well, we freely choose delta x out of the blue sky. And we let, then label the value x plus delta x. All of this is under the assumption we're still in the domain of the function. So we have all sorts of simplifying assumptions we're making, and we'll get on about those uh, in due time. But we have, now have another point on the x-axis, and we can now find another point on the curve. Now, we cannot find this point because we don't yet know the equation of the blue line. But we can find this point. And we can find the... Uh, oh, well, what are those coordinates? Those coordinates are... The x value is x plus delta x, comma. And the y coordinate is f of x plus delta x. So those are the coordinates of that point. Let me write that better over here to the side. x plus delta x is the x coordinate. f of x plus delta x, that's the y coordinate. And so, let me repair my little picture here. So those are the coordinates of this point. And now we can draw a line that passes through those two points, bad as my picture is. This is a secant line. A secant line intersects a curve more than once. And what we can say is this. We do know the slope of this red line. The slope of the red line is findable because we do have two points that lie on the red line. And so we can find the slope of the secant line. And so I'm going to write that as M subscript S, subscript secant. This is the slope of the secant line. It is the change in X, I'm sorry, change in Y, Y value minus Y value, divided by change in X, X value minus X value. And so we know the slope of the secant line. That's from our glory days in basic algebra. Function value, this is the y-coordinate here minus the y-coordinate here. Divide by x-coordinate here minus x-coordinate here. And I'm going to simplify that because these x's drop out in the denominator. And so this is the slope of the secant line. And what we can say is this. The slope of this, you're thinking, well, why does this help? The slope of the secant line is not the same as the slope of the tangent line. Two lines have equal slopes if they are parallel. And these lines are clearly not parallel because they intersect. And so the slope of the red line and the slope of the blue line are clearly not the same number. However, what we can say is this. The slope of the secant line is approximately equal. This is my m subscript t. The slope of the secant line is approximately equal to the slope of the tangent line. These are approximately parallel, but it's a really bad approximation. And so the slope of the tangent and the slope of the secant are approximately the same. The question is, how could we make the approximation better? Well, there are a couple of uh, options on the table, but for our purposes, it suffices to say this. Choose a different delta x. Choose a smaller value for delta x. 
If I chose delta x to equal 2, now I'll choose delta x to equal 1, or 1 half, or 1 fourth. Choose delta x to get smaller. If I choose a smaller value for delta x, then this is now x plus delta x. Now, this becomes my new point. So these are the coordinates no longer of this point. They're the coordinates of this point. And now, that's the slope of the secant line. Now remember, slope, we can think of it as rise over run. And if we rise and run for the red, that's not quite the same as the rise and the run for the blue. However, it's better than it was before. Because as it was before, here's the rise, and then the run was gigantic. And so as delta x gets smaller, the slope of the secant line becomes a better approximation of the slope of the tangent line. How can we make the approximation better? Well, suppose I choose a very small. Now, this is going to go beyond the ability of my picture to maintain the integrity. If I choose this point to be x plus delta x, then the point of tangency is very close to this, the secant point. And when I draw this red line, that is now the secant line. And now you're talking. Now the slopes of those lines, the slow slopes are very close together. That's a very good approximation. How do you make the approximation better? Choose an even smaller delta x. As delta x gets smaller and smaller and smaller, the approximation gets better and better and better. Well, a person might say, why don't we just throw the whole thing out? Why don't we just choose delta x to be zero? Well, if we choose delta x to be zero, then we, do no, long we no longer have two points. We have only one point, and we cannot find the slope of the lines. And so we require delta x to be greater than zero. It cannot equal zero. So we never allow delta x to equal zero. We are interested in is what happens as delta x gets very, very, very close, but not equal to zero. That language should sound familiar to us based upon all of our work we've done in chapter one. We're talking about the language of a limit. And in fact, that's what comes in to save the day. And so what we do is this. All we've talked about here is sort of an understanding of the issue, a representation of the problem at hand. We're now going to find a way to get around this issue because we're going to now make a definition. We make this mathematical definition, strictly speaking, in the strictest philosophical, mathematical, philosophical way, it doesn't matter if this definition actually matches what we're doing in the picture. We're going to make this definition. I'm going to define what I mean when I say slope of the tangent line. When I say slope of the tangent line, I no longer mean rise over run. When I say slope of the tangent line, I no longer mean choose a value here and choose a value here and find the change in y and find the change in x. And I'm, I'm no longer talking about the basic notions from basic algebra. From this point forward, when we say the words slope of the tangent line, this is what we mean. Now, it turns out, it turns out that this definition actually does match what's happening in the picture. It actually does match what's happening in reality. And we can use this definition to, to, uh, to model, to form a, a picture or a mathematical equation set that gives an accurate representation of a certain patch of reality. We can use this definition to estimate the rate at which air is going into a balloon as we inflate it. We can use this definition to uh, determine the, the rate at which uh, two planes are approaching each other. We can use this definition to do many, many, many basic uh, computations in both mathematics and in physics and in many other fields. In economics, we can use this definition to model what something is called the marginal cost or the marginal revenue. If you've studied any economics before, you've discussed something called the marginal. Well, if you understand what that means, it turns out that this abstract 
mathematical definition can be used to model that patch of reality. And so this definition is what's the important, sort of from a philosophical, logical grounding, this is the start of where, every, this is the beginning of where everything goes from. This is not the justification for this definition. This definition is made by itself. It needs no de justification. It turns out, once we make this definition, then all of these little problems go away. It takes some effort, and we got to get from here to there. But it can be used to, to, to find the solution to all these issues and many more. Because this is the definition of the slope of the tangent line. When we say the phrase, the slope of the tangent line, what we mean is this. It is the limit as delta x goes to zero of f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x if this limit exists and is finite. So until further notice, when I say the phrase, if this limit exists, I am including the possibility, the, the other additional rule that it must be finite. If this limit works out to be positive infinity, then this is not the slope of the tangent line. If this limit fails to exist for any reason, and we've seen reasons why limits might fail to exist. If this limit fails to exist for any reason, then this is no longer the slope of the tangent line. If this limit exists, and if this limit is finite, and again, I'm going to stop saying this every time, but until further notice, we will presume that this phrase is included in this phrase. So when we say, if this limit exists, then this is the slope of the tangent line. And when I, and when I make this statement, this is where y equals f of x is, uh, gives the curve. And x comma f of x is a point on the curve. In fact, it is the point of tangency. This point is the point of tangency. So the slope of the ta line tangent to this curve at this point x comma f of x is given by this limit if that limit exists. This has ramifications that go on, well, at least for chapter two, and it's gonna go on for at least three semesters of the calculus and at least a couple semesters of differential equations. This has ramifications that go far, 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 far beyond this little geometric picture here. And so this needs to become part of your mathematical DNA. It, it's never going to, as long as you hang around the math courses, it's anything that smells even remotely like calculus, you'll be working with this notion and the ramifications that it brings to bear on the kinds of problems that we're going to be considering.